Hello YouTube, my name is Jared, PC Dream Gaming and welcome to Cafe Rouge. So first of all, I'd like to thank Sonia from Cloud Novel so much for sending me the key for this game. So I could play it for you guys, definitely go check out Cloud Novel and of course the Steam page of the game. I definitely recommend you should get it for yourself as well because I will be playing only one route of the game. But without any further ado, let's get right into it. The alarm glare bright red. It was only 6.30. Um, sleep five more minutes. That sounds like me. Five minutes later, I woke up. It was 7.30. Who am I? Isis Black. That's a beautiful name. Also, the main character of this game is gorgeous. Look at her. So, who am I? Let's go with... Uh, Dragon, right? We're always called dragon in whatever we do, so... I'm really not a morning person. I feel you, girl. Full name is Dragon. Dragon Black. 16 years old and in high school. I'm pretty much your average American teen. With a few exceptions. Look at her! She's so pretty! I love her so much! Opening the door, I thought I was in the wrong class. It looks like we had a substitute today. Oh, hello there. Are you in this class? Uh, yeah. I'm Dragon Black. You're 20 minutes late. Do you have a pass? I shook my head no. Oh, well, since it's my first day, then uh, just uh, take your seat then. I'm Ron Davidson. I'm taking over for your history teacher this semester. He smells despite my extreme tardiness. Everybody stared as I sat down. I handed in my homework and class continued. When I was written on the board, Ron is a graduate student from Boston University, studying to become a teacher and getting his teaching degree. Let's that quickly. When I got to my locker, someone was already there. Hello, handsome... Dragon! You waved enthusiastically. Man, you should have been to camp. Miss Hillary dropped almost all of the carbon dioxide in the water and everything started exploding. He almost put a fire alarm for real, and then... My mind wandered, not really paying attention to his story. Meet my best friend, Felon Michaels. He's known me my whole life, and you could say we are friends in childhood. But before then, I'll tell you later. Hey, are you listening, Dragon? Huh? Sorry, I'm sort of out of it today. He frowned, then he tilted his head and stared closely at my face. I blinked, turning pink. What? Your face, somehow it looks... Felon leaned closer, only inches away. F felon what are you... Then he snagged my notebook. H hey, give that back. Nya, nya, nya. Come and get it then. Uh, let's kick him. So in my foot, I aimed with my knee under his belt. <laughs> oh Jesus, that's where you're kicking him. Felon cringed and abruptly fell to the ground, clutching his crotch. Oh gosh, I am so sorry. Not really though. I didn't mean to kick you there. Felon was curling up in a ball, cringing in pain. She's trying to really hurt. You should hit more like a girl. He smiled so I knew I was forgiven. Okay, I shouldn't have kicked him, but he really is immature sometimes. Need help getting up? I think I'll manage. I sighed with relief as he stood. We waved each other by and headed off to class. Oh. The classroom was only a few feet away when a funny smell caught my attention. From across the hall, fresh blood stained the glass shards dropped by some careless student. The warmth drained from my skin as I grew pale. It was making me so nauseous, everything went black. You can't stand blood? Hmm? Bright white light. Am I in the nurse's office? Oh good, you're awake. A woman was holding my palm, checking for a pulse. Honey, you should really check your glucose more often. I know. Did you have any more of those events? Those memory relapses due to your accident three years ago? Ooh, I shook my head. Three years ago, I fell off the top of a six-story high building. By miracle, I survived and didn't break any bones, but I woke up with amnesia due to the impact of the fall to my head. I was stuck in the hospital for a couple of months, but I made a full recovery, and three years later, I'm living the normal life of a high school. Junior. Along with that incident, I also got diagnosed with a strange case of diabetes. 
I fainted at the sight of blood and my blood glucose level goes way down whenever I see, smell, or I'm anywhere near blood. School's almost over now. Well, maybe... Yep. Perfect. And that's my typical everyday life. With the exception of my strange condition and accident, the rest of the ordinary life of a normal teenager. But the day isn't over yet. Today was my first job interview at a local coffee shop. Valent suggested I got a part-time job while I was in high school, student to make money on the side. I tried looking everywhere, but nobody was offering any positions. Except for one place I found bookmarked in Villain's internet browser history on his computer. It was a local coffee shop called Café Rouge. They had an opening for a part-time barista. Huh, isn't it 2.30pm now? Was it my interview at 2.40 today? I'm going to be late. Grab my bag, I rush off and ran to the café. Some cars beeped as I passed them in a rush. On the corner of Mulberry Lane, a small sign hung on the side of a scarlet door. Inscribed in ornate white letters, the words Café Rouge were etched in. The first sign it looked like your average café, accompanied by teacups and sweets on round tables. However, there was something amiss in the sweet shop of the light. Would I leave this place once I'd gone in? Something in my gut told me the answer was no. Oh boy. That's on a on a mess. Well, here I am. Hello? Ooh, she's pretty. A girl walked out from behind the counter. Welcome to Café Rouge. My name's Candace. May I help you with something? Uh, yeah, I have a job interview. Her face immediately turned sour. Sorry, I know I'm a little late. I was supposed to be here 20 minutes ago. Oh. There was an awkward silence as she examined me up and down. I think you're at the wrong place. But this is Café Rouge on Mowbray Lane. See, I have my envelope address here with my resume and everything else. I printed this address from your official website. Oh, miss, we're looking for professionals, not some little high school girl trying to earn some money to go shopping for makeup and pretty clothes. Considering your tardiness on the first, no, not even the first day, actually, you're clearly not qualified for a place like this. Okay, now I'm pissed off. What can you even do? All of the employees here have years of professional experience. What can you make? Chocolate chip cookies from a tutorial off of YouTube? What does she think she is? Why don't you just watch me first and see how professional I am before you say anything? You little bitch. <laughs> huh, it's not bad, but I still don't think you're qualified. It's not a matter of how skillful or how professional someone is. You see? It's a matter of what kind of people we're looking for. We're looking for specific people and... And now, what do we have here? Beyond the red curtains of the grand stage, a tall gentleman emerged. Swishing his glass of wine, his eyes grew bright with intent as he made his way down the steps. Ooh! What seems to be the problem, Candace? But suddenly he stopped. Erwin before us, his attention was abruptly diverted. Glancing at me up and down, his eyes grew wire as the seconds prolonged. Fear was clear in his eyes, and shock overtook him as he finally settled on my face, unable to look away. Yes, this girl here thought she had a job interview, so as you can see, I'm showing her the way out now. Smirking, the girl giggled, expecting a similar reaction from him. To her dismay, he continued to stare in shock, ignoring her. Look, if I'm not going to get a job, then I'll just leave. I'm sorry for wasting your time. Wait, don't leave just yet. He reached out to grab my hand. You seem to be forgotten that you have an interview. He smiled and the girl stared at him incredulously. Have you have any experience working in a restaurant or as a barista in a local coffee shop? I reluctantly shook my head no. Have you ever had a job before? Again I shook my head no. He opened my pathetic excuse for an envelope and glanced through my resume. Straight A's in all your classes. Home economics, boiling eggs and microwave scrambled eggs. Well, everyone does have to start somewhere and I think everyone deserves a chance, wouldn't you say? Was he saying what I think he was saying? He chuckled at my confusion. S sir, you couldn't possibly be thinking about hiring a... With one glance, he shut her up. What well then? Apologies for the late introduction. My name is Antoine Le Rouge. I'm the owner and manager of Café Rouge. And what is your name? Again, Dragon Black. Hello, Dragon. How would you like to work as an employee at Café Rouge? Am, am I hired? With a single nod, Antoine confirmed it. My first job at a fancy sweet shop café. It's all too good to be true. Then it probably is. Oh. 
This shouldn't be too bad, right? At least I have a pretty uniform, even though I'm the only one who can see it. Surely all my co-workers ignore me, but hey, maybe it's just newbie treatment. But why am I in the kitchen doing the dishes? <laughs> By hand? Without a dishwasher, I might add. Everyone else was out there with the customers while I'm in here holding a gross moldy sponge. So boring. But if I stop now, I should be fired. It's my job. But I'm sure taking a little break won't hurt. I made my way to the kitchen door. I creeped open slightly. Nope, nothing interesting so far. Wait, what is that? Oh boy. Oh boy. I took a step back as I began to faint. The familiar stench reached my nostrils and I blacked out. Uh oh, oh. that's not good. Is she gonna be okay? Who knows, she looks so green. <laughs> Is she dead? Oh, who cares? Let's just move her before he comes. Speak of the devil. I was too nauseous to open my eyes or my mouth. Um, Stay awake and try to move around. My arms motion in the air as the others moved away, giving me space and air. However, someone brushed her fingers against my neck. I flinched from the cold touch and heard a chuckle. And suddenly... I opened my eyes and Tuan was scurrying me past a small group of employees through the back of the kitchen doors. Finally awake now, are you? P put me down. Chuckling, he carried me up a dark stairwell, hearing the sound of the door creaking, a bright light blinded me momentarily. Welcome to my office. He gently sat at me on the sofa. Antoine stood beside the desk, looking out the window. So now you know our secret. Silence filled the room. What secret? But I already knew. The blood, the drinking, the ecstasy of the customers as they sank their fangs into their partner's necks. It was obvious, yet it was also unreal. He sighed, turning to me. Yes, Miss Black, we are a vampire cafe. While we serve the unsuspecting people during the day, we serve and open only to our vampire clients at night. He looked at my face and gave me a smirk. Are you frightened? My eyes followed his. What was he going to do with me? Hyperventilating and with beads of sweat running down my face, there was no question I was scared of the vampire standing in front of me. But unfortunately for you, we are now in a predicament. I can let you leave it our secret without knowing you won't go telling anybody. I, I promise, I won't tell anyone. And how will I know you'll keep that promise? It makes you understand the situation you're in. If word gets out that a human like you knows of the existence of us vampires, we will eliminate anyone and everybody who might expose us. So if I let the vampire authorities know about you, a human girl has discovered our secret, your neck is the least of your worries. It will come after your family, your friends, anyone who is close to you that might have that you might have told. I got. Are you saying you will kill me and my family? Oh yes. Horror washed through me and my face turned white. But please, sir, I'm begging you. Please spare me and my parents. Please don't tell the vampire authorities. I promise I will keep this a secret until I die. I won't tell anyone about this, please. Just don't kill me or my parents. Well then, let's make a deal. In exchange for your life, you will be an employee at my cafe. As long as you work here, I'll keep it a secret from our authorities about you, a human girl knowing our secret. Your life and your family's lives will be spared. You will work here permanently, that way I can keep an eye on you and make sure you keep your promise to not reveal our secret. One word out of you and I'll inform the vampire authorities. He looked me in the eyes. Welcome to Cafe Rouge, Miss Dragon Black. Jesus. The street lights glowed dawning orange. It was the middle of the night as I closed the cafe door behind me, and as I began walking, I couldn't help but stop and look back nervously. My first job at the most unexpected place anybody would suspect. I Dragon Black, and now working at a dragon at a at a dragon cafe. <laughs> at a vampire cafe. No matter how much I repeated it to myself, I just couldn't believe it. Vampires, bloodsucking monsters who roam the night, preying on human blood. The thought of it gave me shivers. What in the world have I gotten myself into? It would be my first day of work, and no matter how badly I wanted to quit, I was blackmailed by my boss to work here after discovering Cafe Rouge's secret. Why would he go as far as to let me find out a secret of his cafe? He shouldn't have hired me in the first place when he knew I was just a human. Was there a reason that I didn't know of? Because of this turn of events, I nervously started heading down the street. I should be heading home now, it's getting late. I'm home. Mom and Dad sit on the couch playing chess on their digital tablets. Did they hear me? Oh, you're home, dragon. I couldn't tell them about what happened. What's for dinner? 
You already ate, but there's a microwavable mac and cheese in the, in the fridge. Oh, okay. Mom and Dad were always like this. They seemed to not care about anything that I did. I wish they were less cold and distant. Because what? I got my report card back today. It's all A's. Karen, please, just go to your room and go to bed. Your father and I are tired from a day of work. Yes, your mother and I need our own time to ourselves. It's not healthy for us to always focus on you. We're always in deficits from the time you were stuck in the hospital for three months. Jesus, they're terrible. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Mom. Dad, I'll stop bothering you too and go to sleep. They didn't say anything back. I was hoping they would at least tell me good job for my good report card grades. Now they love me, but I wish they showed me more affection. They're terrible. The minute my back on my desk, I walked over and plopped myself on the bed. My hands were shaking and a chill traveled on my spine. My phone? Scrambling over to my back, I pulled up my phone. It's a text from Fallon. Let's just go to sleep. I moved my phone aside and shut it off. Lots of things happened today and I was dead tired. Plus, I had nothing to say to Fallon. I didn't want to involve him in my situation for his safety. Oh yeah, that's true as well, of course. Dressing into my pajamas, I climbed into bed and fell asleep quickly. Alright, I am going to end this very first episode of Cafe Rouge right here. Until now, I'm really liking it. The art is so pretty and I like they got to the point quickly, you know. No um, scrambling around until we found out those guys were vampires. We just found out right away. So the fun can begin right away. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.